stuff that we had last time. The this is the definition of moment of inertia, r squared dm. And then if you want to find the moment of inertia of a bunch of objects and you want to sum them up, you do m sub i, r sub i squared. Um, then also I wrote down some of the uh, last time I showed you the proof of the moment of inertia of a uniform rod around its center. We integrated, and I showed you that it's 1 12th. And then I also showed you that the moment of inertia about the right end or left end is 1 3rd ml squared. I showed that to you two ways. I, I did the, I reintegrated from the end, and I got 1 3rd ml squared. And also, I used the parallel axis theorem. I about any axis is I center of mass plus MD squared. I use the parallel axis theorem from, to shift from the center of mass to the end, and I showed that you can also get that result. So we saw how the parallel axis theorem comes in really uh, helpful for that. And then we saw that uh, this means that we took the ratio of these two, and we saw that uh, that is four times bigger than that. So it was four times harder to rotate, rotate a uniform rod about its end than to rotate it about its center. Now, you know, last week we did a lab specifically on moment of inertia, and here are some of the things we saw. We saw that the moment of inertia of a cylinder about an axis going through its center as it rolls this way, that's equal to half, MV, uh, half mr squared. That one, we, what we call that one IZZ, okay? But you could call it IXX, IYY, depends on how you define this axis, okay? Uh, I cylinder, I guess we can, for sake of, being the same here, we could call this IZZ. The book gives this to you in a table in chapter 10, and they give you all the moments of inertias, and uh, I think they have the picture vertical like that, and they have the axis going through the center. Uh, this is typically the axis that the cylinder rolls around when you have it rolling, okay? So it's half mr squared. And also, uh, in the lab, I showed you the proof of the I solid sphere, two-fifths mr squared. Now for the solid sphere, it doesn't have x, x, y, y, or z, z. Since they're all the same, i, x, x, i, y, y, i, z, z are all the same, there's only one way of rotating it. It's just basically rotating through an axis going through its center. So we don't even have to put z, z, x, x, or y, y. We can just say i of the solid sphere. And then i of the hollow sphere, that one we also saw the proof of. It's, uh, it's pretty easy. You don't even have to integrate. That one is two-thirds mr squared. Uh, these are the ones, the main ones that the book covers. Now, in the lab, I also gave you a few extra ones. For example, I gave you the cylinder. Let me write it on that side. I said there's another way of rotating the cylinder. Through its, oh, sorry, through its uh, center this way. Right? The cylinder can rotate through its center. Now, that one is more rare. You don't see a lot of problems that ask you for that because that one is not rolling motion. That one, somebody has to go like this and rotate it, or somebody has to throw it up in the air in order for it to rotate like that. Um, that one, the formula, we call that one IXX uh, or IYY, right? in the lab. And then that's it. we said that that one is an axis cutting it in half. The formula we gave is 1 12th ml squared. Now notice the resemblance with that, with the rod going through its center. So that one looks like that. But then we said you add half of IZZ. So we added that. The reason why is because the cylinder has a cross-sectional area here, whereas the rod doesn't. The rod is assumed to be the cross-sectional area is uh, assumed to be very small. So for the cylinder, you have to add half of whatever its IZZ is. Because if you consider what's happening to the cross-sectional area, let's, took, let's look at it a uh, face view. Just look at the face of the cylinder. And then it's being uh, uh, spun around on an axis cutting the cylinder in half. Okay. The, the cylinder's cutting, the axis is cutting the cylinder in half. So in a sense, the face of the cylinder, all the different faces of the cylinder, right, which it's made up of, 
all the faces of the cylinder are rotating such that one side overlaps the other, like this. Okay? The moment of inertia of this is half of the moment of inertia of a cylinder which is rotating through an axis coming out of the board. This way. If the cylinder is rotating like this around an axis going out of the board, that's the z-axis. Okay, that's what we're calling IZZ. This one is rotating this way, which is typically what you do when you flip a coin, right? I have a coin here. Uh, yeah, if you take a coin, flip it, goes around like this, right? That's the I. That's what I'm calling IXX here. So for the coin, uh, for the uh, quarter, a quarter is like a cylinder with almost no length. And uh, it's just, if you were to rotate it this way, it's IXX would be equal to, uh, the L would be zero. So it would be half of IZZ, you see? So that's the logic behind that. So that one is the one that I don't think the book gives you. Uh, so we did that one, I cylinder. Uh, then what we also did is we, sh we learned how to translate any of them to any axis. For example, we can say, what if the cylinder is turning around the end, the right axis? Then we shift it over, right, by uh, half the length. So what would that be? I of end. Well, it would look like the I end of the rod one-third ml squared, you see, plus you still have half of IZZ. That one stays the same. So that one is if the cylinder is rotating around the end point right here. Uh, then the other one that we can shift is the sphere. We can shift either the hollow sphere or the solid sphere. We can uh, shift it to the end. We can say, what if the sphere is turning around the end, the right end here? Then we just add, shift it by an amount of r, right? So this becomes 2 fifths mr squared plus mr squared, which is 7 fifths mr squared. So that's the moment of inertia of the sphere about the end, i end of solid sphere. And then for the hollow sphere, I end of hollow sphere would be two thirds mr squared plus mr squared. Which is five thirds mr squared. So that's about it, I believe, as far as the shifts. You can shift the cylinder. I mean, you can shift the hollow sphere, solid sphere. You can shift the uh, cylinder. Oh, another one you could do is shift the solid cylinder so that it sh rotates about the end like this. It maybe hangs by the s side edge like that, and it just rotates like that. So that one you would shift up mr squared, so that would be i of edge. That would be half mr squared plus mr squared, 3 halves mr squared. So these are all applications of the parallel axis theorem. Three half mr squared. Okay. Now in the lab we practiced uh, how to get the moment of inertia of a solid cylinder if the if it's not uniform uh, density. Uh, if the density is increasing as a function of r, we practice the solid sphere if it's increasing as a function of r. So I'm not going to redo those um, again.